Good morning, good morning, good morning to True Love families and friends. We welcome you this morning to our virtual Sunday worship experience. This is truly the day that the Lord has made, and we are here to rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Minister Angela Riley, and I am here on behalf of Pastor Dr. Willie Jacobs, Jr. to worship with you this morning as we come to you once again virtually. While we recognize that some of our states are relaxing the stay-at-home orders and are allowing our businesses to get back to the day's activities and opening up new establishments and businesses, uh, we in the state of Nevada remain under stay-at-home orders and we continue to adhere to social distancing and state-imposed limitations on social gatherings. Therefore, we continue to come to you virtually and in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We would be remiss if we did not thank you and bless you for allowing us to enter into your homes today. We know that you could have tuned in to another channel or not tuned in at all. But you have decided to worship and fellowship with us this morning and we bless you. So we want you to know that you are a very important part of this worship experience, and we invite you to join us and to share God's word with those that you are, are familiar with, your families, your friends, or just host a watch party. You can click share, host a watch party. You can text your friends and families to join us on Facebook Live. If your family or friends may not have Facebook, you can text or call them right now to let them know that they can dial into 347-817-2170. Again, the phone number is 347-817-2170. The access code is 114-4034. Again, the access code is 114-4034. So we encourage your participation in spreading God's word this morning. I believe that we have a mighty word from our very own Pastor Jacobs this morning. And I know that your hearts and your souls will truly be blessed. Let everyone you know, know that the True Love Missionary Baptist Church in the state of Las Vegas, Nevada, virtual worship Sunday worship experience is on right now and in session. And just in case you missed us last Sunday, we received the message from the Lord reminding us that no matter what it looks like, God is up to something. He is calling his people to use this time of social distancing to maximize the silence by connecting with God in a way that we have never have done before. To re reconnect with him on another different level. To trust that God's promises are true. To trust in what he's done already in the past and what he's going to do for us in the future. To trust that he's going to bring us out of this thing better than we were before. To trust that we are in the process of being made new creatures in him. So that we can really be the voice of his people. And to remain obedient to his word. Even in the midst of what we may not understand. It is in this season that we must humble ourselves, seek his face and pray knowing that prayer changes things and that God is a God of the impossible. So although our church doors may not be open to the masses right now, we thank God for this technology, for allowing us to remain connected to you in the spirit of Christ virtually. We hope that you receive a word this morning from our pastor that your soul is blessed and that not only that you're hearing the word and you're listening to a word, but you're allowing the word to transform your life. If you don't have your Bibles right now or your smart devices or something to jot notes down with, now is your opportunity to get all the information and the materials that you need to follow along. And so that you can truly capture the essence of what God has, is, will be giving you today. Um, after we hear our message from our pastor, we will be back to you to give you new updates, any additional announcements, and just a, another prayer just that you continue to be uplifted and encouraged. Praise God, praise God. We will now move forward into our scripture that will be coming from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 11. We'll be reading from the New King James Version. You can read with us on the screen. And it reads, 
I will make each of my mountains a road, and my highways shall be elevated. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of this holy word. We will now have a word of prayer. And Lord has placed it on my heart to do something a little bit different. Um, right where you are, if you're at home, you're on your couch, wherever it is you are, if you're in the car, we're going to take a few moments to allow you to uplift your own prayer to God. Do you know that there is power in your words? There are, you have power in your tongue. And whatever you speak it and believe it, and that as long, long as it's aligned with the will of God, you need to trust and believe that God will make things happen in a mighty way. So as you hear the music, I'm going to challenge all of you just to let God hear your own personal petitions as we just have a moment of silence as you're praying and worshiping God. Allow God to hear you, uplift his name, and just to magnify him and, and let him know what's going on in your life because he cares. Bless him right now. Dear Heavenly Father, you have heard the petitions of your people, Father God. You asked us to humble ourselves, Father, to seek your face and to pray, God. We know that you're a God who is present any and everywhere, Father God. So we know that you have received the prayers of your people, God. We uplift your name, God, asking that you forgive us, Father God. You forgive us for those things that we are aware of and for those things that we may not be aware of, God. We ask that you clean us, God. Clean us, Lord Jesus, so that we can be filled with more of you, Lord. Clean us, God, so that we, as we read your word, that you, are, you will be revealed to us in a mighty way, Father God. Father God, we're asking for your forgiveness right, God, right now, God, so that we can be better, better examples of who you have called us to be today, God. We know that you've embraced and as we see the prayers of those who have called out and cried out to you right now, God, we're praying that you heal our land, God. We're praying that you heal our land, God, because we know that you are a healer, Lord Jesus. We pray that you uplift your people, God. Continue to give us hope, Lord Jesus, to continue to guide us and strengthen us, Lord Jesus, through this time of the unknown. Father, allow your Holy Spirit to work and to miracles within us, God, so no matter what's going on, Lord Jesus, that we can continue to be an example of who you called us to be, Father God, that we can be an example of you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray that right now in this season that you are making us and molding us, God, that we no longer become comfortable with the status quo, that we no longer become comfortable with what was normal and what was traditional, Father God. That we embrace your mighty word, Lord Jesus. That we embrace your mighty word, Father God. So when we come out of this thing, that we are better than we were before, Father God. That we are pillars of you, Father God. We are examples so that individuals can look to us, Father God, and without us saying a word, God, that they know that there is something different about us, God. We need to love more, God, and we're praying for your guidance and your strength, Father God, to create and mold in us newness, new life, new strength, a new prayer life, new relationships, a new understanding, God, so that we can just receive everything that you have for us, God. 
to help us live by your word. To live by the word that you have given us, Lord Jesus. What you've desired in us is no secret. You've given it to us in the word of God. You've given, a, given it to us by blessing us with the Bible. With your precepts for how we should live our lives. So, Father God, as we're resting in this season, that we no longer take it for granted, Father God. That we take your word and allow it to mold and shape our lives. So that we can be examples of you. So that we can be more compassionate. So that we can be more loving to one another, Father God. So that we can have more trust in what you're doing, God, even if we might not understand that we rely and lean on you, knowing that you are all we have. So no matter what it looks like, you are the hope for our tomorrow, for our today. Father God, and we just thank you that you have always kept your promises. So there's no reason to doubt what you're doing and what you're saying, God. Because you have always been a way maker. You have already, always been a promise keeper, God. You've never not done what you said you were going to do, God. Even, even if it was not what we wanted to, go, to, to happen, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the experiences in life. Because it allowed us to be better. To be stronger. To be wiser. And so, God, let us look to you in all things, God. Let us praise you in all things, God. Let us magnify you in all things, God. Let us glorify you in all things, God. Again, God, we thank you for allowing us to come to you at any time, anywhere, and anyhow, God. We thank you for loving us better than we We've loved ourselves at some time. We thank you for continuing to cover us. We thank you for allowing us to see another day. We thank you for allowing us to be in your presence today, God. And so we trust you today. We trust that every petition that has been raised in the name of Jesus Christ has been heard. And we are going to praise you in advance, God. We're going to claim that thing as it is. We're going to claim that thing as it is. We are going to claim that thing as it is. Because you are a good God. You are a mighty God. You are an awesome God. And so today and every day, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Know that God is working on your behalf. I'm talking to you out there who may still be dismayed. Know that God is still working on your, your behalf and he has heard you. He has heard you. Whatever you're crying out for, God has heard you. So rele release whatever it is that's going on in your world right now, in your space right now, in this season right now, and turn it over to God. And it's going to allow you to just continue to worship in freedom this morning. We want you to worship with, in freedom as we move to our music ministry. So we want you to kick your shoes off, stand up, turn your volume up. If you're somewhere where you can't do all that, just raise your hand up. Raise your hand up as we move towards our music ministry. We want you to worship in spirit and truth this morning and in the freedom that God has already given us. Amen. Come on now, right where you are, begin to lift your name on Jesus. Hallelujah. Begin to tell him how much you love him. Hallelujah. Begin to pray. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just want to bless the name of the Lord today. Come on, clap some hands. Oh. Clap those hands.
because not only do we need to continue to support our church, we support the members of our church. We have a church, this is something else you got to thank God for. We have a church who is not standing in the need because God is already supplied. God is already supplying. God is already supplying. So give what your heart is telling you to give and give cheerfully and in the spirit of Christ. We will now have our very own pastor, Willie Jacobs Jr., who will come before you, giving you a word, a word, a word that God has placed on his heart today. I don't know what he has to give us, but I'm sure that God has placed something on his heart today. And so if you're still struggling with something or, or some things are still going on with you, pray right now asking God to open up your understanding to open up your ears, to open up your hearts, so that you can receive whatever the Lord has given the pastor to deliver to you. That this is truly a man of God. This is truly a shepherd of this house. He did not allow the gospel to be shut down just because the doors, the doors were shut down. He allowed the vision of ministry to come forth and just to allow us to come to you virtually. And we thank God for that. We thank God for his vision. We thank God for his wisdom. We thank God for his understanding. And so I'm going to ask that you pray with him. We're going to pray and have our ministry team do one more song. But right before we do that, wherever you are, if you can stretch your hand out to your right, to your right. So stretch your hand out to your right. And we're going to pray for our pastor. Dear Heavenly Father, let your anointing flow like the river, God. Let your anointing flow all over him, Father God, so that your word comes forth with great impact, Father God, so that your word is able to transform lives, Lord Jesus, so that when we leave here this day, this moment, that we would not leave the same. We ask that you just touch him right now, Father God, and speak through him. Use him as the willing vessel that he is. Speak through him and let your word be magnified and let your, 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 your word be glorified so that we can just go forth and be that which you have called us to be, God. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we give him over to you to do what you have prepared him to do, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to say right in that vein. Hallelujah. Whoa. We just wanted to encourage you that no matter what you've been through, no matter what troubles you're facing today, that God is not surprised. He's not shocked. He will never put more on you than you are able to bear. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, pray, team. I've gone. I've gone through the fire and I've been through the flood. I've been broken. I've been broken into pieces. See, I've been flashing from love. From above. But through it all. But through it all. I remember. That he loved me. That he loves me. And he cares. And he cares. And he'll never put more on me. Put more on me. Than I. Than I. Can bear. Come on, lift those hands right where you are. Receive your blessing. Receive your miracle. Hallelujah. He's here for you. Oh, 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 come on, let's go again. Say, I've gone the same. I've gone through the fire. And I've been. And I've been through the flood. I've been broken. I've been broken into pieces. Into pieces. Say, lightning flashing from above. But through it all, I remember. I remember 
That he loves me. That he loves me. And he can. And he can. Yeah. And he'll never put more on. Put more on me. Than I. Than I. Paul was really saying, God know my limitation. He knows my strength, my weakness. God knows everything about me. And he'll never, you always said never, never, put more on me. God don't want to, sometimes God got to break you to make you. Mama said, South Carolina, back in East Coast of South Carolina. Mama used to say, you got to cut you down to size. Yeah. Say that you're smelling yourself. You're getting too big for your britches. But he'll never put more on you than you can bear. Amen. Let us pray. Our God, our Father, we thank you. For you and you alone are our God. And you love us in spite of who we are where we are. You love us and you love us because you are love. And you and you alone love us with a special love. With a kind of love that exhibit your greatness, your nature, your purpose. God, we thank you. 
And I saw God, you'll open up our understanding to the spirit that we can receive your truth. That we can understand that you love us just where we are, as we are. That you desire us to change our life, live a life of holiness and righteousness, to be faithful and obedient to your calling and serve your will, your purpose, and be a people and a person that's fulfilled with your happiness and joy. We thank you for this. We praise your name and in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We thank God. Miss uh, Wiley and Dr. Hendry and uh, those that the devotion team, the praise team, we thank God. And Brother Matt, we thank all brothers. Just thank all of you. We love you. We're going to have a great time today. I want to bring your word today. Uh, let's go to the book of Isaiah. We look at the word. And it reads, I will make each of my mountains a road and my highway shall be elevated. I want to talk about overcoming mountains. Overcoming mountains. Pray with me while I bring your word. Mountains are the obstacles, the crisis, the problems, the trials, the storms, the issues, the situations, and the circumstances in our life. Here, I just wrote. 700 years uh, BC before the coming of Christ. And really, he's talking about mountains and talking about roads and highways. And those are the things that's in our life that can cause us problems because they become obstacles in our life. But when I look at the text, I want to talk about mountains. Mountains, mountains. Uh, there are 22 great mountains. Four in the USA. Mountain has always been a challenge to many men. They want to rise to the top of the mountain so that they can see a far distance and make a claim. They want to conquer and receive the honor and the recognition and fame that they have wrecked or conquered the mountain. To climb the mountain, one must be in a great physical and mental shape. One must have, there must be a special drive and a desire to go to climb the mountain. They need mountain gear and proper clothing and medical supply. They need to be ready for the mountain, for the mountain will be ready for them. Those that climb, those climbers, they are, are to be wise and use a guide who has experience to direct them and keep them safe and secure. The guide is an asset, but the guide have a cost. On their journey up the mountain, they rest at different points and they camp out at night because they need that rest so that they can go another day. There's a fee that the state charges to climb their mountain. Those who are wise, they choose the season that is best for them that they may be able to conquer, to climb to the top of the mountain. We all must realize in our life, there are seasons in our life. Some start to climb up the mountain and they turn back. 
They find the time take more than they are able to give or take. The push and the struggle and the climb weigh, weight the desire and the drive within them. So they are not able to overcome, so they turn back or they quit. The climb push their heart to, to the limit and one see no hope of reaching the top. Uh, so they retreat, they accept defeat, and the journey that they started turned out to be not what they wanted to be. So one turned back and one quit. The physical mountain, they take physical strength to reach the top. It takes patience and persistence and not turning back a mind that says I can make it in spite of opposition, in spite of resistance, or in spite of what I may face. One must apply one total being and seeing sin and will oneself to reach the top. One must push and have a total thought in mind that pain and struggle and they refuse to give in or give out. They must be a part of a person that never say no, nor surrender to cause one that the pursuing of what they are pursuing as this mountain, they will never quit nor turn back. Mountains in our lives. There are many mountains and great mountains, all kinds of mountains. There's a mountain of discouragement that calls us to fail. Many times people mount lies. There's mountain of lies that people put against us. Unforgiveness, unforgiveness because a mountain when we're being abused and we're alone. The mountain of shortcoming because you've been, haven't been encouraged nor have you been honored. The mountain of uh, of distrust come when there's no support and people have let us down. The mountain of not believing in oneself cause you to abandon your task, your career, or even looking for a job. The mountain of not loving or caring and cause you to, to never experience true love in your life. There is that invented mountain of lying and being used or taken advantage by others that you may not, that you may be accepted or received. There's a mountain of not knowing you are special. Listen, in your life, but I can tell you right now that God loves you in spite of who you are or what you are. Let me tell you something. God's mountain, God's mountain is your mountain. And you have to experience what God has placed in your life. The mountain of being lost in the shadow of your past, that's a great mountain. It's a terrible mountain. It's a horrible mountain. The mountain, that cloud of someone, listen, who have died in your family and has made you a hostage in a sense of holding to silent suffering that has no glory nor end. The mountain can give birth to hope or despair. Let me tell you something. You need to have victory over your mountain. The strength. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. There's a strength, the strength of weakness that comes in mountain. But even in mountain, there can be success or faith, love or hate, bad, listen, or bad, peace or war, wholeness or brokenness, life or death comes in mountain. Mountain challenges in our life and on life journey. Difficult in life, listen, difficult in life raise the bar and cause one to be and do great things. Mountain, listen to me, mountain test as to what we are given to and to what are our most personal interests and where our values and heart rests. So God placed mountains in our lives. Mountains are the uncertainties in life 
that put our reasoning and thinking to the test. Let me tell you now, mount, mountains, mountains are part of life. Listen to me. Made is the mode, listen, of a decision making as to where we look or seek an answer. Do we seek at God when we have our mountain experiences? Mountains, broken flow of the normal life. Mountain test the will of the heart and if the heart are willing to be true to God's truth regardless of the outcome. Mountain, it checks as to if there's a new birth unactivated and working as an assignment in our life. It checks your dedication, your obedience to God's truth and assignment. In our text, in our text in chapter 49, it's really dealing with the restoration of Israel. But also, it deals with the future of the Redeemer, which is Christ our Lord. Chapter 49 talks about mountains and roads and highways, and God is going to supply their every need, for he has an everlasting love and affection for them. And God is willing to give his best to Israel. God said they will neither hunger nor thirst in the heat of the sun won't be upon them. God is talking some sweet talk to Israel. They will have, to have they will listen, they will have God promise and God perfection. They will live, you know, live, live a lively relationship. God wants them to receive him and respect him and give him the greatest honor in their life. God's going to remove the obstacles and show himself as their true and only real hope in their life. He wants to give them a life that all nations around may know that he is the living, the true, and the real God. God wants a covenant and a renewed relationship with Israel. Those who was in captives, God wants them to return. And those who were living in darkness and sin, God said, I want to set you free. God will be a blessing upon them in their lives and in our lives. We have a ministry of mountains. We face the mountains of life. Mountains have a purpose in our life. We can have victory over mountains with obedience to God, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We all have our mountain. Your mountain may seem impossible. But to God, it is nothing. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Life has many mountains. Someone owns the mountain. Mountain can keep you from the real life in the Lord. The world can mess you up. Let me talk to you. TV, the world news cannot solve our problems. You got to be careful who you're listening to. You got to be careful of the experts. You got to be careful of who you're tuning into, you know, to be the Lord Jesus Christ. We can be entangled and entertained with the world on our way to hell. Who owns the mountain? God created the mountain. The mountains are not mine to deal with. Amen. He said, Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Mountains come in all sizes. Your mountain may be different than mine. God controls the mountain. Mountains are no accident. Mountain, it is an appointment. Look at Jonah. He had an assignment. I said Jonah had an assignment. But Jonah's assignment was also a movement. God assigned Jonah to go to the great city of Nineveh. And he said, I want you to preach against the evil. Preach to the folks down there at Nineveh. Jonah ran from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He got on a boat 
a ship, as they would say, and he took a cruise. Got on a boat in Java, took a cruise to get away from the Lord. But let me say, tell you one thing. You can't run and you can't hide. God had something waiting for him. After the sailors threw him overboard, God had a limo waiting for him, a great fish. God will, God will must be done in our life. You can run, but God will let you run. But what you're running from, God say, I'm going to have you running to. He is just that type of God. God plant mountains in our life. A life is not on cruise control. Our life will be filled with mountains. And mountain has their special purpose. Mountain have a purpose. They contribute to our success. Job had a mountain, had mountains in his life. He lost everything and ten children. And his wife lost her mind. And he had souls from head to his feet. But can you say that Job said, the Lord give it, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, listen, not Jesus, but James, Jesus' brother James said, count it all joy. Mountains are the pathway. Mountains create valleys. And yea, though I walk through the valleys, Lord, you're with me, and I'm glad about it. Mountain can help us to grow in life. You ought to be glad about that. Mountain calls us to have a resume, have experiences, and have a testimony. We could never be the person God wants us to be without those mountains in our lives. The, the persistence and the pressure and the setback, the pain, the left out, and what makes, what makes real character and bring the best out of us. For in Christ, we hold on to his word. So mountain is a part of life, but we know that Christ is with us at all times and everything in our life. Mountain of loneliness causes one to seek hope and help. We face our, we face our experiences, the problem, issues, and circumstances through those obstacles called mountains. Mountain are part of our life. Mountains may be the, the set setback, the setup, but our life may be run through and around mountain. We do not need mountains. Listen, are the mountain to hold us? We need to hold on to Jesus. Our perception and our purpose and will in God. We are more than a country. We ought to be shouting about that. Mountain experiences, but we don't have to have a wilderness behavior. Now our world are in a mountain free fall, and man don't know where, where to go, nor do he have an answer. But let me tell you that Jesus is the answer. We hear it say about, you know, who Christ is. Well, you got to know him for yourself. I heard, not this. I heard, I got to know who Jesus is in my life. The Lord Jesus is our mountain mover and our real help in time like this. He is our forever hope and our eternal insurance. God assurance. God can turn your mountains into gladness and give a robe of joy. God can turn all this thing around in our life. The highways of despair and the hearts and the hardship and the worries into praise. God wants the mountain planet that, that we may live and walk in the glory of his presence. God raised the highway so people will come, will come, shout, rejoice, and worship and give him the glory. God is in the business of mountain business but in building our lives and helping us overcome. They are part of me that need mountain to cut me down to God's side. They are part of me that will run away if God didn't put a mountain 
in my life. God knows the very time, the place, and the proper, listen, measure to work the mountains in my life. Mountain help us to keep life real and knowing we are always in reach of God. The thief on the cross got caught, but Jesus didn't let him off the hook. He got a pardon with no restriction. The mountains in his life, listen, the mountain in his life, the issues, the situation, and all the things in the thief's life got him a death sentence, but Jesus gave him everlasting hope and life. There's no other name under heaven. Jesus is our only hope. And the mountain that we face in life is a part of us growing and developing and becoming the person that God has called us to be. Mountains of uncertainty, mountains of difficulty, mountains of impossibilities, mountains on our travel and journey in life. Nobody can do it like Jesus. He knows how to get our attention. He knows how to bring the best out of us. He knows where we are, where we stand. He knows our thoughts. He knows every imagination. And he knows our heart. And God knows what's best for us, as the song would say. God knows. And we should understand that God means the best in us. But God had to work the mess out of us. And we have to learn and understand that God is a God of holiness and righteousness. And he deals with us that way. Even though we are sinners saved by grace, even though Adam and Eve commit the sin and we got the addiction, God still loves us in spite of who we are. God still cares, but that's why he put the mountains in our life. To break us down, to shake us up, to turn us over to him. And I'm glad about it. There's nobody like the Lord. He's always there for us. He's always there to help us. He's always there to turn us around and always there to welcome us back to him. Mountains, struggles, difficult. Right now, our people in this nation is facing mountains. Many face the mountain of just making a living without realizing they can receive death because they are not thinking, they are not reasoning in the way of the Lord. God said, I will supply your every need. And he still supplied our need. He's still helping us. He's still, he's still providing for us. He's still moving in our life in a great way. And it's all about the Lord what he's doing for us and through us and in us. Right now, with the storms and with the trials and with the mountain, we as a Christian, we ought to have a greater uh, a testimony. We ought to be a greater witness. We are the ones that be standing up. People should see us smiling and having joy in spite of what we're going through. To realize that God is in control of our life and God means the best. God wants the best for us. And we ought to just hold out, hold on to God and continue to hold us up. It is good to know mountains serve a purpose. But do you learn from the mountain? Do you overcome the mountain? Do you move on in spite of the mountain? It's all about knowing, serving, and being a part of God's kingdom. Amen. I want to extend an invitation to discipleship. There may be one out there who want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. This is a great time. It's a personal invitation. It's an invitation that only you can receive. It's an invitation that's given to you because we all have come short. We all have lived in darkness. We all have lived a life apart and at a distance from the Lord. So in extending this invitation to discipleship, there's only one name, one person, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ that can give you hope right now and give you everlasting life.
that can give you peace in spite of what we're facing today, can give you courage, that can uplift your spirit, that can give you strength beyond yourself, and cause you to live with the vertical, trusting in the Lord, and knowing that he will do what he said, and knowing that he is a Lord, and he is God, all by himself, and he has the authority, he has the power to do what he said. God never backtracked. God never canceled his word. It's, it's lasting and always the truth. You have to come to him just the way you are. You say, well, I got some problems. I got some issues. You always going to have some problems, some mountains, and some issues. But come to Jesus. The song says, just as I am. Weary, wounded, and sad. Messed up. Pushed out of shape. Some of us is like me at one time, but I'm still working on it was crazy. But I came to the Lord, and he heard my cry. He turned my life around. I had some issues. I had some problems, just like many of you. But God can turn your issues into victory. He can turn those despair into joy. But you got to come to him. Realize he's the only hope you have. He's the one that extend a hand, give you a life, and give you what the only hope that you can have in this time where people are hurting, they're broken, don't know how they're going to make it. But he says in the book of Matthew 11, 28, he said, come to me. All ye that are burdened and heavy burden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn of me. God wants you to learn about him. Come to him. For he is a good God. He is the God of our salvation. Amen. Thank you. As we come in this time, this place, and under the circumstances of, in our country. But God did not just bring a sickness, a virus into a nation. He brought it into a world. You must realize that even in spite of what's happening in our world, God is still in control. And here we talked about, we hear it on the television and Read it on your phone about the hot spots, the place where it's really uh, doing great damage and bringing de causing death. We can take, we ought to take the gospel and make it a hot spot. Let it infect lives that men may turn from the flesh and turn to Christ. We can use this time to serve Christ in a greater way, to turn our friends and our neighbors, those that are walking lost down the street, turn them to the Lord. And brothers and sisters, this ought to be a Christ time of turning people to the Lord and lifting people up and helping people Tell them that God is still in control. God having the ladies, he haven't lost any power. And God's word is still the same. And he is still the same. But we have to hold on to him and realize that he is our great and wonderful and mighty God. So you hold to his word. Those mountains that you face, of the mountains that God had placed in your life. And some of the mountains we can mentally create. But God said, I can help you with those mountains too. In other words, God can take you through and make you better, refreshed, and new. May God add a blessing to us.
praise the Lord. I hope that you were blessed by the word that Dr. Jacob just ministered, overcoming mountains. Amen. We praise God for that word. And I love the part where he talked about the mountains are not in an accident, they're an appointment. Amen. Praise God. God purposes them. God places those mountains in our lives. Uh, beloved, we hope that your life has been enriched by this virtual worship experience. It is our intention that through our Facebook live streams, YouTube channel, prayer calls, and other virtual ministries, that you stay connected with us and that we stay con connected with our members, our friends, and ministry partners. For those of you who don't have a pastor or a church home, we extend to you a virtual hug and a handshake today. We want you to know that Dr. Jacobs wants to be your pastor. We want to be your church family. And today, we want you to know as well that true love can be your new church home. Pastor Jacobs has already extended an invitation to you to accept Christ and to join True Love Missionary Baptist Church. Now, let us hear from you. Text, I believe, to 55469 or call us at 702-648-3603. And or type, I believe, in the comment section on the live stream, and one of our ministry leaders can contact you regarding your decision today. To do ministry like this, my sisters and brothers, it takes a dedicated team of individuals to coordinate and execute such a venture. As I roll the credits of our team of 10, I want to then, I want to again thank God and praise God for Pastor Jacobs. For my tag team worship leading partner, Minister Angela Riley, for our music ministry team, under the capable hands of Brother Matthew Banks. For our media ministry team, Deacon Orlando Riley, Deacon Don Shoemate, and Brother Deshaun Wilson. Worshiping and connecting like this, sisters and brothers, is new and different for us all. Doing e-church, if you will, has literally pushed many of us out of our comfort zones. Even the way that we get to mission and ministry of the church is new and different for some. Please know that we greatly appreciate your faithful giving during these trying times and that your ongoing financial support helps True Love meet the needs of our church members and community, as well as to further our efforts to share and spread the word of God. If you have not already done so, Please make your donation to True Love Missionary Baptist Church now or at any time during the week. You can give electronically on Givelify or you can send your check or money order to True Love Missionary Baptist Church, 1941 North 8th Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89106. These are your announcements. Beloved, our prayer calls are on Tuesdays and on Fridays at 10 a.m. and 7 o'clock p.m. The call-in number is 347-817-2170, and the access code is 114-4034. Know that our prayer line is not just for true love. It is for any and all persons, members or not, who stand in need of prayer. Amen. True love, next Sunday is Communion Sunday, and we'll once again have our drive through pickup service for your communion elements. It is tentatively set up for Saturday, May 2nd. We're asking that you would please check our Facebook page and look for text alerts for any updates regarding the pickup for the communion elements for next Sunday. Amen. Stay abreast of True Love's ministry updates and announcements. Please text TLMBC to 55469 or visit True Love's Facebook page regularly. If you missed any part of today's live stream, you can catch the rewind on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. Once again, sisters and brothers, thank you for tuning in and sharing in today's virtual worship experience. We look forward to sharing with you again same time, same page, and conference line. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Willie Jacobs, Jr., and the entire True Love Missionary Baptist Church family, we love you, we're praying for you, we encourage you to hang all of your hope on Christ Jesus, and never forget, we're in this thing together. Until next time, may the Lord our God bless you real good, and be blessed. 
Amen.